yun yung engineer niyo. Babae pala. Kaya niya yan? Kaya niya. Alam ba niya yung ginagawa niya? He said na if babae yung pilot, hindi ako sasakay. Parang may expectation ka na ay babae siya, less yung technical knowledge niya. I see this gender gap in the field of science and engineering or STEM in general as a consequence of many factors. And these factors actually are inherently connected with one another. Pag iniisip mo ang isang Pilipina, ano ang trabaho na iisip mong ginagawa niya? Doktor ba? Nurse? Teacher? O isang physicist? Piloto? Inhinyera? Ayon sa Global Gender Gap Report ng 2020, nangunguna ang Pilipinas in closing the gender gap sa buong Asia. Pero, posible hindi ito ang realidad sa larangan ng science, technology, engineering, and mathematics o karaniwang tinatawag na STEM. Sa buong mundo, kinikilala ang STEM bilang isang male-dominated field. At ayon sa isang sociologist, kahit sa Pilipinas, may gender gap pa rin dito. Minsan, may pu- nung pumunta kami ng site inspection, narinig ko lang siya. Sabi niya, ah, yan yung engineer niyo. Babae pala. Sabi niya, tapos... Kaya niya yan, kaya niya. Alam ba niya yung ginagawa niya? May mga times din po na they question yung judgment ko. Hindi sila maniniwala hanggat hindi pa sinasabi nung kasama kong lying man. There was one time may nag-comment. He said na if babae yung pilot, hindi ako sasakay. There's a gender gap in the field of STEM in the Philippines. We did a study in 2020 about gender equality in the workplace and we found out that added to the fact that there's such a low labor force participation rate of women in the Philippines. If you look at niche occupations, there is even lower labor force participation among masculinized occupations such as engineering, technology, um, infrastructure building, and even like STEM. Ayon sa Commission on Higher Education, during the academic year of 2016 to 2017, 29.3% 29.3% lang ng mga estudyanteng naka-enroll sa engineering at technology courses ang babae. So, I'm part of the Center of Excellence for Engineering Quantum Systems here in Australia. And recently, meron kami yung mga women-only scholarship. Kasi when you look at physics, it's really very male-dominated. So, example na lang, dito sa department, Namin, ang ratio ng lalaki sa babae na academic, 4 is to 1. There is 4 times as many men as there is women. Bakit walang babae sa physics? And it really boils down, I think, to yun nga, expectations. When you look at the list of, of really good physicists, you'd think of Schrodinger, Heisenberg, you'd think of men. Wala kang role model, except for a few, na i-ingrain siya sa society na ang physics hindi siya ginagawa ng babae. Maiuugat daw natin ang gender biases na ito sa ating kultura at mga batas. There's also like cultural factors na sasabihin sa mga kabataan natin, ay hindi bagay sa yung engineering kasi ano eh, pang macho yan eh. Or hindi pwedeng mag-physics ka. Kasi yung physics ay kailangan talaga lagi kang nasa lab, wala ka nang time para sa pamilya mo. But also the kind of environment, yung culture ng mismong mga occupations sa ito. Conscious bias, it's also, you know, it's social norms. Because you're not expected or it's not the traditional careers that women take, so it's not their first choice. The number of men in college courses, no, in STEM, it really comes from the gender stereotypes, no? If you always thought that, okay, like these careers in STEM are just for men, most probably a, a woman would not take these courses, no? kapag pinadrawing mo yung mga bata ng scientists, most of them will draw a man. The nurses, the like you know, the doctors, the, the people who take care of our emotional needs, most probably babae yung picture in your head. So kapag merong babae na mag-break ng expectations na yun, somehow, it is harder for them to move forward kasi they are not 
doing what they are expected to do. Well, I would sit through talks where you have, you know, maybe two men and one woman presenting, and they would all be, you know, equally good talks, um, equally technical. Pero at the end, kapag tanungin mo yung mga tao, ah, yung talk ng babae hindi siya ganon ka in depth. Pero, ha? Huh? Pareho lang naman. So, yung may may ganon na parang may expectation ka na ay babae siya less yung technical knowledge niya. Wala kita natin culturally itong mga bias na to pero hindi siya nabuugad lamang din sa kultura eh kasi na-enforce din siya nung mga batas natin. We have a lot of laws to protect women in the workplace in the Philippines but it doesn't mean that um, our laws are perfect. We have even teleworking act um, even before the pandemic happened we also have laws um, ensuring break breastfeeding stations for men, women in the workplace, ensuring that um, the hiring process is actually gender equal, etc. But the relevant thing here to consider is that we don't have any laws that actually promote the participation of women in traditionally male-dominated spaces, like for example, STEM. So our laws are inherently very status quo in nature in the sense that they just ensure that women can still perform their traditional work at home while still working in um, quote-unquote professional settings and getting paid for their work in professional settings. Ayon sa 2011 report ng Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit mas kakaunti ang mga babaeng nasa STEM ay ang kakulangan ng role models sa larangan ito. Tingnan na lang natin ang mga nagawara ng prestigyosong Nobel Prize sa larangan ng physics, chemistry at medisina mula 1901 hanggang 2020. Ayon sa statistika, 23 lang ang bilang ng mga babaeng Nobel Prize winners. Pero ang mga lalaki na bigyan ng karangalang ito, 601. Sa lahat ng nanalo ng Nobel Prize sa tatlong kategoryang yun, halos 4% lang ang nanalong babae. Sa Pilipinas, mula 1978 hanggang 2019, meron tayong kinikilalang 42 na national scientists. Labing isa lang sa kanila ang babae. Kahit na 46% o halos kalahati ng STEM workers sa bansa ay babae, ayon sa pag-aaral ng Department of Science and Technology noong 2015. I think napaka-importante ding i-connect yung mga babaeng nasa STEM field na ngayon doon sa mga younger generation. Kasi sila yung magsisibing role model na pag nakita ng mga kabataan, kaya ko pala, kaya pala ng babae, hindi rin pala ako masyadong you know, makakaras, hindi rin pa, magiging successful din naman pala ako sa ganyang field. Mas marami may encourage mga kabataan. The more women in STEM we celebrate, the more we show women and girls out there that being a woman in STEM is normal rather than exceptional. On an individual level, we need to be conscious of these biases that we have. And STEM is, is a career for both men and women. And especially, you know, as, as uh, different challenges are arising you know, in society um, as a result of climate change, this pandemic, Nito lamang nakalipas na taon, napakaraming babae ang nagpamalas ng galing, husay at tibay sa iba't ibang larangan, kabilang na ang STEM kung saan namamayag pag ang Pilipina. Para sa mga nangangarap na maging katulad nila, malawak pa ang espasyo. Nothing should stop you from starting, you know, your journey in science. And There are so many other girls out there and other women who are already starting that journey. And the journey for you as a girl starts now.